All right, so let's get started. Um, real quick, if you guys want to get yourself critiqued um, and looked at, you have to join Critique Hour on Reddit. Um, you go to istabrak.com and click on the Reddit icon. It'll take you to our little Reddit uh, group. Join, become a student, and upload your work so that it can be critiqued. We have a community challenge, a really, really fun challenge, due on the 6th of August, Tuesday, August 6th at 5 p.m. Eastern Time, non-negotiable due date. I'm not going to push it to the 8th because the 8th I'm going to Puerto Rico, and I'm going to be vacationing for the first time I'm actually going somewhere, and I won't be back until late August. Um, so I want to make sure that everybody understands that this is a non-negotiable due date. You have a little over two weeks to finish your illustration. What is the details? What are the details of this community challenge? It is a luminescent humanoid elemental character design. And this is the resource pack. Please download it. I have a, a list of, of, of pictures that you can use, a compilation of pictures that you can look at um, to help you get started with your design as references and as inspiration. Please read through this. It's pinned at the top of the Reddit community, which you can join through Reddit, remember. And um, it is a dark background, it is a glowing character, and everything else is up to you. Just don't be cheesy. I don't want to see a rocky fire golem elemental. I don't want to see a water elemental. I don't want to see a wind elemental. I want to see something attached to that. What, how can, a derivative of fire golem, what can you add to make it more original? Use your brains as if you're working in a studio and someone came to you and asked you for this great, um, awesome final boss design and you have no idea where to get started. This is training you for studio um, like experiences with, with working with people and drafting and working with restrictions, <coughs> design restrictions. Right? So join it. Have fun. It's supposed to be fun. It's supposed to be enlightening. Enlightening. Get it? Um, so one thing I'm going to do today is critique this piece, which is not a not a, an elemental, I don't think. Um, but it really does work with the same theme, dark background, glowing elements. I don't think if this is... If, is this an elemental? I really need to make sure it's not an elemental. If it is, oh well, I'm critiquing it today just to help you guys with your designs. Um, if you want to join as a patron, I don't work with any sponsorships or marketing or anything like that. Um, become my patron on Patreon and you get a lot of educational material in exchange and you can join us on our private apprentice discord uh, where we have assignments, um, we have discussion and it's just a really wonderful place and no pressure zone to create art and you have challenges just like the humanoid challenge but every single month you get a challenge just like this one. There's also alternative homework for lower tier skill students. You don't have to be a professional to join apprentice. You can be an absolute beginner and still join as an apprentice. It doesn't matter what level you're joining, you're still surrounding yourself by people who draw, who care about art, art enough to join as an apprentice um, and, uh, and, and, and just become a really, really tight-knit community of dedicated artists. So feel free to join on Patreon, even as a watcher, any amount is, is welcome because add it up, it becomes a very self-sustaining community and I really appreciate it when you guys have my back. Um, so that's it. Let's get started on today's critique hour. So right off the bat, there's a problem with the light environment. A light environment is the relationship between the light source, the object, and the background. In order for us to appreciate a candle, would we light it in a dark room or would we light it outside in midday? Obviously in a dark room. The room needs to be dark for us to appreciate that lit candle. So I darkened that. And then you have this wax-like matter here as his hair. And let's take a look at what wax is made of. Well, it's translucent, so it's made of something not necessarily opaque. It allows the light through it. It's melty, so it's like a liquid, but it's at different temperatures, so it can only be a liquid at high temperatures. So it's a little bit see-through as a liquid. So wax, candle. Let's take a look at some of these references. So really, really bad pictures, but... This is really good. 
you can see how we can see the light going through the candle glowing from the inside out this is called subsurface scattering sub means under surface under the surface the light scatters and bounces back out making the object look like it's glowing we can see this in any object that's translucent it doesn't have to be a candle any object translucent means partially see-through transparent means completely see-through okay so you can see that here and you have none of that here on yours you have basic cylindrical course shadows uh, but this is the secret with subsurface scattering wherever there is a shadow replace it with a highlight and that's how you get subsurface scattering because technically the light is inside shining out canceling out any shadows that would be there and replacing them with a highlight and that's it that is it. So I'm just going to use dodge tool here to create that effect. And this little dude will start to look like it's glowing on the inside. Huh. That's simple. You didn't need a bachelor's degree in art to do this. Did ya? Select inverse. All right, anywhere where there was a shadow. I'm replacing it with a highlighter. And I'm just going to start doing this manually. It's not going to be all the way because it's just translucent, so it's not going to have glowing all the way, but just enough that the light is shining. And I'm going to exaggerate it. Feel free to overdo subsurface scattering, by all means. I mean, it, there's always a chance that a student overdoes anything wrong and ruins it for everybody. But Feel free to do it, of course, with the with the basic request not to be noobs about it. <laughs> it's as nice as I can put it. But this needed some subsurface. And we, we just did it outside of the normal range anyway. I don't think that we would have, sub, have subsurface all the way through. But I'm placing it in anyway. All right, let's just take a look at that. Now it's reading as wax. Now it's reading as this really believable just substance that is burnable just like the waxes this wax flame that you have and I'm gonna still work on the wax here and his hair I'm gonna make it all the way subsurface all the way see-through this flame you have is not bright enough the quality of a flame so let's take a look at where your values were before it was gray flame any kind of light source any kind of object that glows in a painting glows with no man's land values that is what makes them work is that they, they, they start to look like light actual light I mean if you looked at the Sun and it was just a gray tone that would be a really cool Sun and we'd all be freezing and we'd all be dead so the Sun has to be hot and that means this has to be bright and it has to function in order for it to be bright it has to be so bright that as we evolved as humans we evolved Repre I mean, uh, recessed eyebrow structure, eyebrows that stick out casting cast shadows, eyelids that stick out casting cast shadows, uh, eyelashes and eyebrow hair that stick out casting cast shadows, eyes that have a very particular function, opening and closing, dilating to allow light in or out. Oh man, we've an entire eyeball has evolved around the fact that the sun is high magnitude and is really, really unforgiving. But the sun has to be that level of heat for us to be have to have sustainable life. So that is why you should have <laughs> bright candles in your in your painting, okay? So this bright candle has to be no man's land value. You can't use no man's land values on objects like skin because they don't glow, but anything that glows needs that. So now that we've determined this is the color of the light source, this off-white color in its cooler area, we have to grab that color and in a low opacity use that inside the candle wax. And candle wax is also really shiny. Um, so we'll have like moments where it's really reflecting the light source. So I'm gonna try to capture the lasso here. Oh, shit. And as I'm outlining it, I'm trying to show how, oops, 
some of these areas here have a dripping candle, kind of like a, a candle shape of the wax as it dripped down. And you don't have really these outlines. A lot of what textures do is in the outline of the texture. It's just really slow water, really. It's really slow, thick water. <clears throat> okay, so I'm just adding that in there. And then now I'm going to find that white color and I'm going to slowly apply it to represent that shine that wax has. I mean, it's, wax is so shiny, people use it to make things shiny. And that means it's going to be a sudden spike, and that's what highlights are, really. It's going to be a sudden spike of that shine level. And anything facing. And as for um, making the candle yellow at the tops, so that's not appropriate because it's just going to keep its color. It's going to have some of the light source color on it, but you straight up change the color of the candle. And that's not, that's not right. It doesn't need to be that bright. So let's take a look at our reference. We only get some moments of it. Yeah, this whole area is getting lighter as we go up. But it doesn't need to be a complete change of the candle color for it to read as wax. And then you don't even have wicks. You don't even have the, the little black thingy at the top. So you can take this character design to a whole new world. When I was younger, and I used to love overdoing masterpieces, my favorite thing to throw into a, a masterpiece was a candle. And I loved rendering them, and I learned all this about candles just from really looking at references of candles and trying to capture that beautiful subsurface. And then I loved clouds, too. And eventually I started to realize, maybe I just love subsurface scattering <laughs> and anything that has it. Okay. So we have an area here that needs actual core shadow. And that's the so inverse. That's this spot right here. The thing is, I'm not going to keep it as a core shadow obviously. I'm going to bring in some subsurface. Yeah, this zoom out for this to create that feeling. And I'm just redoing the subsurface scatter. And I'll go back and zoom out and make sure it's looking accurate and appropriate. And that's this is what I said in the last time I talked about subsurface, which was to do with that icebergy looking character design. Is that Dodge Tool is your friend when it comes to subsurface scattering with Photoshop. But be classy, okay? Don't overdo it. Don't over depend on photo, uh, dodge tool. Don't assume that it'll just do the work for you. You have to aim it. It's just a tool. You got to use it right. Okay. So, all right. So we have. A little bit more, and I'm trying to figure out how I want to apply subsurface scattering to this dude's head. So I'm going to assume that we're going to have light at the top. So this is the thing with subsurface. You can start the object shading it as if it's just the basic shape. Then you cancel out core shadows if it's glowing inside out. But technically this light is casting the shadow of the wax back on top of the head. So we would get a shadow right on top, just here. 
And saturate. Keep it saturated. Subsurface scattering is illuminate and saturate. And then suddenly there will be a break out of that core shadow right at the tops. No wonder my eyeballs hurt. don't have my glasses on. And then we're throwing that cast shadow back this way. And now we have an actual traceable. Like if you did your organic form studies, then you'll know. And all you artists neglecting your form studies, it's going to come back and bite you in the ass. If you don't do organic form studies once in a while, and I don't mean a while, I mean like once a week, it's going to come back. It's going to come back and haunt you. And I'm just trying to find where these core shadows are that still get to stay core shadows, and I'm going to find where the subsurface core shadows are. And then I'm just going to start illuminating. So I found the core shadow, and I kind of want to drag it out. And so a lot of it is going to be experimental, just so you don't get anything that reads as not wax. And wax can take all forms of shapes. It can be smooth wax. It can be rippled and bumpy because of how long it's been burning. And in general, in comparison to the background, the wax altogether should kind of glow. So on a new layer, I'm going to just throw a layer of kind of a bright value on top of the wax. And then zooming out. See what else I can do. And raising the wax value up here. And then as we can see in the reference towards the top, we just get more see-throughness. So not that much shadow. And the further we get we get just that gradient, but of course we want to preserve the cancelling out of those core shadows. And for all this to make sense, we have to darken the background. dropping these levels. See that? Just made the wax really come out. And so you have really inappropriate values everywhere else. They just don't really make sense. Let me see if blur tool does the job or else I'm gonna have to mess around. Okay. Um no, Blur Tool isn't doing the job for me. Uh, filter, Blur, Gaussian Blur. And then I'm just going to delete it, whatever is not obviously the candle. Okay, so here's the problem is that you've got three very similar, like if we talk about the design, you've got three really similarly shaped candles right at the top. The lower half of the canvas is starting to look really, really boring really quickly. So give us some space at the top so we can breathe. Okay. And I would love for you to rethink the design. But let's talk about the design itself. Um, and how to make this character make sense. They're in a dark room and the only environment that they have that illuminates them is the candle. So I'm going to darken the whole face stylistically and then erase away the glasses. Not to make them glow, but as if they're catching some, some kind of ambient sheen hanging around. See that? That looks really cool. It's nice and dark. And then I'm going to bring in some core shadows, so sitting towards the lower half of the face. And this is all light. I haven't done anything to the face apart from light. Anything to the whole portrait apart from light. 
the whole painting, sorry. Light is a beautiful thing. And if you study it with form studies, this is why you know none of these are escaping me and you wonder, oh, it's because she's experienced. No, it's because I've never skipped form studies. And I've always assigned them, so every time I assign them for a student, I'm getting practice out of them too. Form studies is studying light on form. It's perfecting the actual tools with which you complete this trade. If he's got a big nose, he's gonna, it's going to catch some light, but I'm not worried about that just now. I am worried about cast shadows everywhere else, though. Candles love to cast cast shadows on everything. Might be even a, a bigger cast shadow than that. Zooming out will help you tell. Candles need a bit more coarse shadow. Um, longer cast shadows everywhere else. Darker character all around. Okay, and then darker here moving up. This is just a basic white candle. Then we're going to just have a vertical reference. We just use that reference that we found and have subsurface scattering just traveling down. And then I'm going to use this value color and just darken around the candles or this edges and then re-illuminate. It's just back and forth. But if this, this is my critique, my critique is back and forth. Your process should not be back and forth. It's a really cool design. I've never seen wax portrayed as hair. It's really tricky, too. What did I deselect? Zooming all the way out makes you think of things in their like most true shape. That helps you find core shadows easier. No, that first one we added was wonderful. Something like that here. We're just adding back those ones that we darkened as we darken the environment. This one gets some illumination on the other side. And definitely some more highlighter because it's really close. I'm going to try to find. So think of your, 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 your elemental designs just like this. This is how you're supposed to be thinking of them. And then I'm, I'm tempted to bring in some illumination over here. Yep. And then we're just going to blend that. So, do you guys have any questions at all? Add Isterac if you want the questions answered. <coughs> Who disliked the video? <laughs> A hater. I think I can guess who. Eh, yeah, haters. But they come crawling back. They need art teachers. There aren't enough of us out there. Um, and then we have to select. And I'm just going to blur the edges. And again, just continuing with the same kind of thing. Did I deselect? I did. Just 
want to see how much I can get away with the rule, rule breaking wise. It's a little too bright for my taste, but it might, it might grow on me. And that's mostly subsurface is about showing how the shadow still sits, on, sits inside the most inner stem of the object, because that's where it's most dense and light doesn't go through that, but the outer reaches is where it can chill. And I don't want it to feel like it's glowing, but there is a magical element. And then we have the interior bumps. Of the, uh, of the wax. And then we're getting smudge. And then I just feel like there would be some right around here on the inside. But I don't know if my visual instincts are guiding me right with that one. Feels right, but let's see what it looks like after we blend it. And all this messy lasso work, I'm going to have to go back and clean it up. And just try to represent like that drippy kind of rough texture of wax. Just like that. But that's if you want to go for that like, you know, rough texture, there's wax as a smooth texture. It's just such a malleable thing. And then I have to smooth out the edges with blur tool. Okay, so back to that multiple light sources of the same size. That's just bad design. Uh, you, what are you saying then? Every time you make the same shape repeat, you're making each shape less important every time you clone it, right? So what are you, what can you do to, do you even need this one? Let's get rid of it and just see if we even need it. You could have done something else with his entire character. Something else, something different, something new. And just allowed that part to be the only part of the light. Like if this character is up to you, if you were involved, but if he had three candles, I'd advise the writer that it's just a bad idea. Um, but if he's got three, he's got three and you have to keep it. But in my opinion, it's just bad design. It's also really high. I mean, you can lower it to be a little bit further down so it creates its own little world and it's not contesting the size of the, uh, of the other candles. So it's just over here. You have a nice little variety and nothing's really going to be asking for attention. And that's a little bit cleaner, I think. And then you're still following the original writing. If that has that was like not optional to do. Not optional to leave. And then now you have an illuminator coming from a different angle. And we can start illuminating some core shadows. As well as giving uh, subsurface on other uh, components. So I'm just going to use color color correct. Around here. I can get rid of that. And then reinsert the core shadow that's needed. And allow some of that wax to stay behind. Okay. Some wax is actually really rough, 
Um, I think this would be a good idea to make it look more like a horn made of wax. Um, to continue with the rest of the body, uh, we, we do need that little sheen on the glasses. Oops. I'm just going to grab a universal chill in here somewhere. And the glasses themselves need like a, their own little sheen towards one half. <coughs> And then I'm just going to smudge that away so that we can keep that ambient feeling. And then we've got some light coming off the top that we haven't even addressed yet as it sits on the face. And the nose is going to catch a lot of that light moving down. And I'll throw everything back into shadow if it's exited too much. Forehead, a little bit of the chin. I mean, if he's got a strong chin, I really don't know. I'm also going to get a color layer and desaturate a lot of these values. It would not be this saturated. I'm going to re darken this candle moving up. Okay, so again, he's a candle elemental, so he's not going to um, show a lot of light, but we would, he, he needs to be in a dark environment. But we're going to take some liberties here and try to show how some of the light is getting on him. And this this is straight up the white light I'm using. I'm not using any other color. God dang it. Just like the tops of his sleeves top of his shoulder area, the cast shadow of that little thing, some light on his, that little thing in the waistcoat thing, I don't know what it's called, some light on the upper arm thing, you know how it is. One thing I love doing about subsurface scattering with burn tool is putting burn tool on shadows and just burning along the candle and you get that contrast that a candle would have. <clears throat> Getting rid of any mid-tones left over because it is a high contrast same. And then there is the magnitude of each candle because it's not really a candle light, it's like a torch. It's really strong, this light. It's right at the top and then I'm going to make one big blob. That's really going to help create the feeling. You know, when you see him, you just see two little orbs coming at you. This is why I'm saying your framing is a little bad. 
kind of merging down, but everything else needs to represent the light environment. So even though we added that sheen on those glasses, they're still going to be there. But I'm throwing things back down. My brush doesn't seem to want to work at all. And we're going to get those really long cast shadows. So the glasses need to cast cast shadows. And we have these like cheekbone trailing lights. They sit right on the top of the forehead. Just in anywhere where there is light. I'm going to scroll all the way out. It's going to be like that skeletal presence of the light around. Maybe there might be some. Hmm. How would it be? Yeah, something like that. But I'm still, again, throwing that back into the distance. Deliberately. Okay, um, there might be some relief of the core shadow behind him as those little winged sections enter the backspace. Everything is being broken down. Just behind, back there. Nothing is blended just yet, but as they're moving into the space behind him, and now I'm smudging. And I'll go back and readjust whether or not I even want these sort of placing light where there should be a cheekbone. So I'll reinsert the cheekbone. But, and then with that, I think we'll get the final bit of his head structure. If you don't have a smudge brush, I do have smudge brushes in my store that you can grab. And they are the ones I use right now. I use them for everything. Block and smudge, block and smudge. I also have blocking brushes. I got them all. You want it, I got it, traveler. What are you buying? So this is a very evil... What's his name from the Beatles? John Lennon? No, is it? I don't know. I'm uncultured swine. <clears throat> okay. So I really want to make his glasses a, a color of some kind. It feels like they could be a color. I don't know. I don't know. Let's let's try it. I feel like tinted glasses would be really, really cool. Of any kind, really. I don't care. Just something to scroll around and experiment with that you might have fun doing. Even if they're just a saturated yellow. Or something. Oops, I inverted them. Ooh. I don't know. But there, of course, you know, we have to assess whether or not they're even going to be visible. But like, you know, two demon eyes and the demon head. and No, it's up to you. If you want to keep them boring. I like the green. And I feel like he'd be a really um, ridiculous person. I feel like he'd be really into his colors. So a bow tie that is of a different color than white seems more like him. And I feel like he's really proud of his red color. Uh, so, you know, we're adjusting design at this point. And it's good to think in these... Uh, possibilities. I feel like that really works for his character. And I feel like when he has white, it has to be pure white. When he has these, um, you know, bright moments, they've got to be strong. And right up here at the top, there would be a little bit more shine from the light 
kind of uncomfortable with the gap on his head. Just makes me super uncomfortable. And I might desaturate that till it matches his skin tone and then we get that really uncomfortable looking <laughs> gap in his head. We need a bit more of a cast shadow off those bodies and wax. <clears throat> much better. What an interesting character. Very, very fun. One thing about his face that, you know, could use some help is the smile. So what I would do is do a Cheshire Cat thing and just make his teeth really, really visible and everything else shine or hide the teeth and make everything else but the glasses visible. You don't, we're not really missing the face. Let me show you real quick why that is. I don't miss it. You know, when I have a just the glasses there. I don't miss it at all. Because he's just all about that headdress. And then you can have a lot of fun everywhere else. But if you need the if you need the face, I mean I guess you could keep it. And it was my, if it was my design, I'd make everything red. Glasses, bow tie, and hair. It's a little too bright. He just looks like Elton John in the afterlife. And as for um, the body, um... What I don't like about it is that it's long and we've just got everything going on up here. So is he Slender Man or is he Candle Man? Or is he Slender Candle Man? And I've really never heard of a Slender Candle. So we can solve that direction issue. He can keep his arms long as hell, but I don't really care for the rest of the body. I just care for the head. You see that? We really didn't need all that. <coughs> see? If you can meet it halfway. Still don't need all that extra stuff though. And then I would grab the whole thing and move it down. Oops, shit. But that would mean that I need to re-highlight at the top. Okay, dokes. And what else would I add? I'd make the second candle significantly weaker. Oopsie. I'd make it much weaker before I bring in the total finishing highlights everywhere else. I just wouldn't make it such a strong candle. Because these are the kind of his horns, these are his powers. Okay, and if you want to, this is the amount you're allowed, if you want to, you can throw in a gradient toward the lower half just to help. And that, that shadow you had, 
was inaccurate. It needs to be more flat the further you go out. So someone was commenting, they love when I critique the, um, the larger pieces because 14 day challenges are really repetitive. I completely agree with you. <laughs> I love the larger pieces. I know I tell people not to do masterpieces, but I love, <laughs> we're learning out of your mistakes, so thank you. <laughs> no, don't do masterpieces. That's not an excuse to do masterpieces. But, um, but yeah, I totally agree with you. I love doing the larger pieces because we get a variety of mistakes and some people want to do masterpieces for one of the main reasons to do them, which is to see how they're doing, you know, with their, with their values and their, you know, their general skill. It's a good test. We need a bit of light at the base because there's a reason why we're getting this cast shadow and that's because there's light down here. And it grows out radially. Shit. For some reason, this reminds me of Over the Garden Wall. I've been watching that again for like the 18th time. And uh, amazing show. Please go watch it. Inspire the bejesus out of you. Filter, blur, Gaussian blur. Okay, duplicate, bring down, erase that whatever the shadow, wherever it was. Ugh. Stupid self brush. So proud. So elegant. Okay. So that's the area around him. Uh, because this candle's been moved, the shadow of these two needs to be adjusted. But it's a step in the right direction. There's something about the glasses that I just want to do. And I don't know what it is. I liked when they were darker, but now I want to make them bigger. Or brighter. Such a fabulous boy. Yeah. It's hard, you know, to do that. We, we get demons who, who have this, like, light on them. And then we have their glowing eyes. But these are full-on glasses. What if they were just matte? No shine. That's cool too. Uh, no. What if they were a really dimmed gray tone? seems okay but then I want to just hide them right I just want them out of the way now so I think the best thing to do even though I would love the gray glass the red glasses is just just to make the red the, the glasses gray oh come on Photoshop fuck asshole sorry guys so I'm just making them gray <laughs> And I'm darkening the whole face area, which I think at the end is the more mature choice. Because at the end, you know, the focal point is right at the top. I will sharpen around. Yeah, I think that's better. You can always add in those glasses sheen. Right at 
the top of the glass and is responding to every individual, kind of. Light source. Right at the top, make it look more like glass. The bottom, too. Not so much that you're outlining, it's just a delicate amount. And, uh, a little bit more shine down here. Edit, redo. Okay. Um, there's just so much more I want to do, but time is running out. But we're taking everything piece by piece as I'm applying. How are you? Dealing with your layers and layers. Okay, make them shine, make them dazzle. <laughs> Any questions? I'm sorry, I'll take questions now. I didn't before. Just at Isterak to get the question across. Take a number, get a line. Okay, um, there's the smudge tool. And I just want to cast more shadows, but who's to say it'll work? Trial and error. That's all it is. If you guys thought that pros kind of just make one good choice after another, it's not true. It's not what they do. They make one bad choice, correct it, go back. Make another bad choice, correct it. Make two good choices, then a bad choice, go back, correct it, until they're done the painting. Nobody draws with one good choice after another. Nobody does that. Unless you're 50 years in, into art and you're just a fucking master. I want to put more shine, I want to put more glimmer, I want to put more, uh, you know, like appropriate levels anyway. Just on the outsides of the wax. Right over here. Some over here. I want to put more of that light color down there. And these total um, highlights that I talked about earlier are just about being super, super delicate with where you place the brightest hot points. It's got dimmed. So they can work appropriate to the whole image. and create a very believable space around the character. <clears throat> Can you add blue to the bottom of the flames? Eh, I wouldn't. I mean, I don't think any of these candles have all of that. Oh, they do. Um, <laughs> you can if you want to. Uh, but I don't know, not every single one of these has like a blue flame. Where is the real candle flame? I mean, you barely see it. I wouldn't, I wouldn't, like it's not that important. The ones we looked at did. But, um, this one's a dark environment, so it won't show. I mean, that's, I wouldn't, I wouldn't break the palette, but if you want to be a little bit more realistic, go for it. See these little shines? This is the room shine, so you can add that in. But it's up to you. <coughs> Let me mess around with the saturation. I know, that's creepy. And this is where we were before. Whoa, that was really desaturated. Yeah, I would saturate all the way out here. 
Look at that difference. When we saturate it. Okay. There's nothing else going on in the body, which is why looking at elementals is going to be so cool. Um, because the whole thing is going to glow. So before, a little bit too dim, felt like not really a candle. After, I brought a lot more realism into the candles and darkened the room so that the candles can work. And then we've added that cinematic kind of disappearing act. What does blurring the hair actually do in parts? I know it looks good, but why? That's off topic. Can you add blue to the bottom of the flames? I already answered that. What's a good way to paint a highlight on an edge, like with the glasses rim? Is it just a soft brush made with smaller, made smaller with each stroke? Yeah, that's what I did, I think. Or did I use dodge? I think I used soft brush. With white, pure white, the color of the light source on the glass. Um, having a hard time with my technique, trying to do thin highlights on edges that blend well. Yeah, soft brush, low opacity, high feed, 100% white. Yeah. Pulls off the one candle with the blue frame. No, I. if you want to, I said if you want to, you can do it. <laughs> I would recommend some more detail in the blue flame, some more waxy, like really strong illumination. Um, like I, I'm just so tempted to illuminate all the way down here. That's what's going to make this challenge so much fun to critique. It's just going to be so many different combinations that we can mess around with. See how like nice that is when the candle is glowing around his head? If this was my painting, I'd have kind of tried to even find a candle and make it twist around and really mess it up so that I could get as accurate a, a representation of it as possible from my reference. Oh yeah, I'm like that dedicated to art. I don't know. There's just so much you can do. As a design, it's a little bit like I've seen this design before. I'm not sure where, but I feel like I've seen it before somewhere already. <clears throat> there isn't any bounce light. Not really. I mean, maybe there's a little bit on his chin from the collar, but we're just casting the shadow of his head on his collar right now, not to make it too complicated. You can make the background a little bit, a little bit brighter, if you want that silhouette back. But I'd bring the silhouette back by making him darker. as much as possible and that would be more accurate because if he had a dark suit it's only going to look more black just to boost the suit a little but it's still a dark room. Okay, and um, good luck with your corrections. Have fun. And try to rethink the design if you can, especially that candle. I mean, we found, I think, the best possibility for the glasses, but if you want to take the glasses somewhere else, that's cool. I would recommend kind of bringing in some wax to kind of drip on top of the glasses, drip on his face, because it just doesn't make sense that drippy, I mean, it's like the fairy that enchanted him or the demon that enchanted him said, okay, I'm going to make your head made of wax, but I'm also going to let you look good and give you a good hairline and the hair part. I don't think so. I think if you want to go for it, for this waxy look, then you just got to gotta go all the way. Just make it kind of like drip everywhere. You can make some pieces drip on the ground. Or you can be very simple with the subsurface scattering and just like make a super, super simple 
um, bass tone all the way through. It's like nothing is, ha it's just a bass tone all the way through. And things only get interesting at the top and this entire thing has already been subsurfaced. Let me just get shadows on the other side. Without the bumps, so it would be like a smooth sub subsurface cavern. Okay, there's just so many possibilities. Good luck with your corrections. Um, thank you guys for watching, that's it. Um, a lot more atmosphere in this one, a lot more space around the character. Try one of the combinations of the subsurface scattering pattern. If you guys want to join for critique, go to Reddit and come submit your work on Reddit by going to isterback.com and clicking on the Reddit icon. Uh, join our community. It's going to be really similar to what we looked at today. Lots of subsurface scattering and illumination in a dark environment. If you want to join as a patron, you still have time for this month's challenge homework. Um, and then I'll be assigning a new one for August. Thank you everyone for watching. I'll see you guys on Tuesday the 23rd at 5 p.m. Eastern Time. Bye guys.